Yeah, um, my name is Christian Dorst. I'm a technical consultant here at A2K Technology. I'm based in Brisbane. And uh, yeah, I'm focusing on Revit products and uh, Navisworks, BIM 360. Um, yeah, Navisworks is what we're gonna have a look at today, uh, especially on the clash detection tools. So um, I expect maybe 45 minutes um, to cover the most important things with the clash detection. Um, before we do that, maybe just let me share my screen and I have a short presentation for you. Maybe just let me start with a couple of slides. Um, if there are any issues with the sound or if you have any questions, um, you just use the Q&A or chat function here uh, on your um, webinar control panel. Uh, and I'll try to answer the questions as soon as possible um, or maybe at the end of the presentation. But uh, yeah, I try to do that as soon as possible so that we don't, um, yeah, so that we answer the question right uh, straight away. Um, yeah, so a bit an overview of what we're gonna do today. Um, as I already said, I'm going to show you a very few uh, slides about Nevis Works, the different versions and the file types. Um, then we go into Nevis Works, have a quick look at navigation and selection for those of you who have not worked much with Nevis Works so far. And uh, yet, yeah, then we go into the Clash Detective. Hopefully, we find some Clash. We will. Um, and then we will. Uh, have a look at managing these clashes, um, assign statuses to the clashes, assign these clashes to other people, and uh, have a quick look at the possible workflow. Yeah, the different versions of Nevis Works that we have. Uh, on the right, we have Nevis Works Freedom. Um, this is really a free version of Nevis Works. It's more like a viewer, like a PDF viewer. Um, where you can navigate in 3D models that you get from somebody. Uh, you can review the model data, you can uh, turn on, turn off elements, you can measure um, elements, you can just check the model. Um, this is a pretty good tool if you want to give access to somebody to your 3D models who is maybe not a designer, um, not a drafter or modeler, um, not a BIM coordinator, somebody who maybe not really uh, yeah, focusing on, on BIM tools. Um, that should be very easy to, to use. Um, and uh, it's a great option to, to involve these people into the um, process and into the BIM workflows. Uh, Nevisworks Simulators is uh, in the middle with uh, a page version. Um, additionally, to just reviewing and measuring data, you can merge files here. So with Nevisworks Simulate, you have the option to export a 3D model into a Nevisworks format, uh, merge these files together. You can already have a timeline, a simulation about the construction process maybe. And you can also um, uh, do a quantification. So you can um, just extract, for example, Revit parameters out of a Nevisworks model very, very easily. So if you have a Revit model, it can be just a click on one button and um, you have uh, all your, all your uh, quantities. Um, yeah, and on the left, we have Navisworks Manage. That is the one that I will use today. Um, that's the one we need if we want to work uh, with the Clash Detective. If we want to have a look at clashes. Navisworks has different file types. We have, uh, the first one is NWC. This is a Nevisworks cache file. This is more like a temporary file. Uh, that is the one that you save when you export from Revit or from AutoCAD or from other software. Um, that NWC file cannot be opened in Nevisworks Freedom. In Nevisworks Freedom, you can only import or open NWD files. Um, the next step, if you after you have exported NWCs, is that you maybe um, merge them and use links. 
uh, in your Nevisworks file and you save it, that means you have a Nevisworks file now. Um, that is just a bunch of links to MWC files, to temporary files. Um, that is okay to use if you just um, want to share that through a um, Nevisworks model with your colleagues internally and they all have access to that models in their links. Um, if you want to um, involve somebody, some external people, I uh, want to exchange the model with somebody not who, who don't have access to that links, you should need to make sure that you save your Nevisworks file into an NWD. So that means that all the 3D data, the 3D geometry is imbe embedded in that file, that Nevisworks data file. All right, so that's um, the introduction. Um, let's go and have a look at uh, Nevisworks and uh, Revit. Um, the first thing I wanna show you here in Revit is um, how you can export something how you can create an NWC file. Um, when you install Nevisworks in a paid version, you have uh, during the, uh, the setup process, you have some options there. And one of the options is that you install an external tool, uh, what is called the Nevisworks exporter. Um, it's also available for the 2019 or 2018 versions, depending on uh, what version you use. Um, and that will automatically be installed during the installation of Nevisworks Manage or Simulate, not during Nevisworks Free. The Meta Free version has not the option to uh, export something from Revit into an NWC file. That is just a few. Um, yeah, so I have a very small project here that we will use in the next uh, minutes for um, uh, to check for the, for the clashes. And if I want to export that, uh, here in the add-ins tab in external tools, I have that Nevisworks 2020 exporter. And uh, yeah, you see you have not much options here. Um, we uh, export into an NWC file. That's the only option I have here. Um, I already did that, but if not, you just click save. Here are some uh, Nevisworks settings that is maybe good to have a look at these as well. Um, this more bit for experienced Nevisworks users, but uh, here you can basically select what elements of your Revit project get exported. Um, so like lights, this is something you maybe don't need um, in, uh, in your Nevisworks file. Uh, also, you can control if linked files are converted or not, or just linked CAD formats. So CAD formats, that is more like, like 2D uh, AutoCAD drawing. Um, convert linked files means that, for example, the MEP engineer has the architectural model linked in, um, uh, that that one will not be converted into an NWC file. Um, also, uh, rooms, uh, which coordinate system to use, um, yeah, or export the room geometry itself. Um, that one is ticked on. That will cause a bit of issues. This is, uh, one of the objects that uh, you maybe don't want to see when you work with the, the clash detection tool, but uh, I'll leave that turned on uh, so that we see what, what happens here. Um, yeah, so I already did that. I uh, exported uh, that uh, model into an NWC file. And uh, once that is done, we can go into Navisworks Manage, for example, or simulate that is uh, one, of the, one of these two versions I need to uh, uh, open to import that NWC file. And that is how that uh, how, how Nevisworks Manage should look like when you start it for the first time. Um, you have here on the side a selection tree, properties and save viewports. If you miss some of these uh, windows, you can go to view uh, workspace windows and uh, tick or untick uh, these. Um, panel uh, pellets. Uh, so this is the standard setting I have um, that I use for yeah, most of the projects I work on. Okay, so uh, how do we get that NWC file uh, into our project, into our Nevisworks environment? Uh, here we have the append and uh, merge tools. Um, and that is the one I can use to import data, the NWC file, or also um, 
AutoCAD data um, Revit files directly. Um, we have two options, append and uh, merge. Appending means that the files will be imported as they are. So um, for example, if I have double ops in geometry, um, the file will not be cleaned up. And that is the difference to the merge command. Merge means that if you have duplicated uh, content, like what I already said, the, the MVP engineers maybe also have uh, some uh, walls from the architectural model in their model. Uh, so that means that a merge command would automatically clean up that uh, doubles ups. Um, I personally don't really like it uh, to have some elements uh, deleted in my model um, that I cannot really control. So I always use the um, append tool. So uh, yeah, here I can select the file types then. So you see that we have a large number of files we can use here in Navisworks. Um, I had uh, exported the NWC, so that is the one I'm gonna import here. But you see that we also have 3ds Max files. You can use MicroStation, uh, Autodesk DWGs, of course, um, Point Clouds, Faro, uh, IFC files, get more and more popular, uh, IHS Inventor files for uh, mechanical elements more maybe. Um, yeah, of course, uh, Recap and Revit, Rhino, SketchUp files, also something that gets more and more imported. Um, yeah, so what I need to do is here to uh, have a look at uh, my NWC files. Um, and here I have that architectural model that I already exported. And I can just go and open that one in here. So see, it's a bit like a 3D view, um, you have the materials on that, uh, on the elements. And uh, yeah, the navigation is pretty much the same like in other Autodesk products. You can uh, just click the mouse wheel, hold it to pan your model. If you also um, click the shift button and the mouse wheel both together and move the mouse, you have the orbit tool to fly around that 3D model. Yeah, it's very easy. Also the view cube to look at your model from different directions. And the navigation bar also with a uh, pan tool, some zoom uh, functions like the zoom window. I think nothing really that you haven't seen before. Um, yeah, so what we have here as well, and I, what I already pointed out is the uh, selection tree. Um, that one is important here in, or I really like to work with, uh, with that one here in, in uh, Navisworks. Um, so the selection tree shows you a bit the structure of that file that I imported. So here at the top level, is a one architectural NWC. So if I select that file, everything in that uh, 3D model will be selected. But I have also the option to expand the uh, substructure here. And you see that now I have everything in the ground floor. It's also not very, uh, not changing very much, but now it gets more interesting. Um, I can go and um, look for different types of objects. Um, that's a bit depending on the original software. So that is how it looks for a uh, Revit model. If you use, um, import something from AutoCAD, for example, it is more like a layer structure that you have here on the side. But this is, uh, I think, really helpful to select um, stuff in your, in your 3D model or to find something in your 3D model. Uh, other than that, you can, of course, uh, also select something in your 3D model and have a look at the selection tree, and that shows you what type of wall that is. So that is a stud timber 90 wall uh, that was used here in the Revit model. If you have selected something, also here on the left, on the right side, you see the properties palette. There is also a lot of information in there. Um, 
the better the, the, the BIM data and the background of the object, the more you see here in the properties. So for a uh, Revit mo model, again, you should have uh, many, many uh, tabs here with many informations about that object, um, like uh, materials, element IDs. This is the room information. And here also is some uh, length values. That is, uh, by the way, that is what gets extracted if you do uh, quantification um, or the volume of, of the wall. Um, yeah, so just to give you a bit an idea about what's uh, what gets imported. Um, the last thing I want to show you what's imported here with that model is uh, the few ports. So they are also pretty similar to the 3D views in the uh, Revit model. Um, so you see that we have that 3D model in brackets, or that 3D view in brackets, and uh, yeah, that's the same one that I have uh, here in Navisworks now. So we can also reuse um, the Revit views. All right. Um, so um, with the selection tree, what I can do, and this is a bit the first step before we start with the clash detection, um, is that I can also set up selection sets uh, that can be very helpful. So for example, um, I want to have a set with all uh, stud timber walls in there. I don't want to go to the uh, fourth level of that uh, selection tree every time. I want to have a quick tool to just select all the stud timber walls. So you can make use of the selection sets. Uh, you can find them up here, search, uh, select and search, manage sets. And uh, now I have selected the start timber walls. You see them here in blue in the model. And now I just click here, save selection. And now I can have a new selection set with the start walls. The next selection set I have maybe is brick 230. And I'll create another selection set for the brick walls. So uh, this seems maybe not very helpful in that small model, but um, I think you work on much bigger projects, a much larger project, and it can get very, very complicated to find the right stuff to select the right elements again and again. So um, that's why I'm showing you that. Um, it's much easier sometimes to make use of these sets. So just keep in mind that we had uh, just two selection sets created. Now you see that it's very easy for me uh, to uh, use these two sets. I can close that uh, sets manager and uh, the selection tree also has other options uh, or the views. So I can switch to uh, the set view maybe and uh, yeah, you see, I can also uh, very easily select um, the elements in that set. Yeah, so it's a very cleaned up view, much easier than dealing with a couple of uh, files maybe in that standard view. Okay, so keep that in mind, we will, we will use that selection set later in the clash detection itself. Um, before we can do the clash detection or before we can start with the clash detective, uh, we need to have a second model or we need to have something that uh, is causing issues here with the architectural model. So I go and append another file, go to the append tool here again. And now I can of course just use another NWC file, but what I wanna do now, the second option you have, you don't need to export into NWC. Uh, you can also look for uh, an RBT file and can maybe import this uh, mechanical 2020 Revit file directly also into Nevisworks as a second option you have. Let's do that. Maybe it takes a moment to load it in. I'll maybe have a look at the Q&A uh, palette. No questions so far, that's good. Okay, um, yeah, so now that MEP model uh, is imported, 
Um, I see that we have a very small duct system with uh, two air terminals, some flex ducts in it. And uh, yeah, we just have a few clashes in there. But when we have another look at the selection tree, you see that we not only have that architectural NWC, of course, now we also have the uh, mechanical 2020 uh -huh. Revit FAR um, available here. And I can, of course, go and expand it and see what is on level zero and can again select the different elements in here. Um, yeah, so um, what you can do to maybe get a better idea of what is part of the architectural model, what is part of the mechanical model, another uh, function you have here in Nevis Works is that you can select something in the selection tree, right click, and you can override items here. So like uh, override uh, colors. So you can change um, to maybe a color that is not used anywhere else in the model, something like that light blue. Press OK. And you see everything that is part of that mechanical 2020 Revit file. is now uh, yeah, in a light blue. Um, yeah, you can also override the transparency like to so that all elements that are from the MP engineer are a bit uh, more transparent. Uh, this already gives you an idea uh, if there are cutouts in the wall or not, but uh, yeah, we don't want to do that visually. We want to have that done by the uh, Clash Detective. And that is the next step, what we do now. Um, now I wanna see if there are any clashes and uh, you already know there will be. Um, up here we have in the tools bar, we have the Clash Detective. And the Clash Detective has another palette. Uh, of course, if you like to, you can uh, try and drop it and uh, uh, fix it here to the bottom or to the side of your, of your window. I just leave it here open to not take away too much from my model window. Um, so you see everything is created out at a moment. I cannot uh -huh. make any, any selections or any changes. Um, what I need to do first is add a test. So you can have more than one test. So you have a list of tests that you, that you can set up and run again and again during the life cycle of a project. So uh, the first test that I want to set up is um, arc versus Mac, so architectural versus mechanical. Yeah. Um, there's a first thing that you just set up the test, give him a name. And now here on the bottom, we have uh, two selection. Uh, options, selection A and selection B. And uh, this is pretty much what we had here on the selection tree on the left. So uh, you can expand to different models and can select sub elements in that model like the doors. Um, <laughs> for the moment, we just want to check the architectural against the mechanical model. So very, very easy uh, setup at the moment. Um, just to let you know, you can also use your selection sets that you have set up. So uh, now you maybe get an idea why I did that and set up some selection sets, but I will make use of these later. Um, yeah, here we have some other options, like um, if you want to check against surfaces only, but that is what we do here. Surfaces, that means this is the 3D geometry. Uh, if you also want to check against lines, you would need to uh, turn that on or off here or here on that uh, mechanical model. Uh, so lines would be yeah, if you use model lines or if you have uh, an MEP model where you have more like a single line diagram or something in there, um, that would be maybe interesting to use the line. Um, if you check against the point cloud, you should activate check against points as well. Um, yeah, I don't have any points in here, so I don't need to do that. 
And uh, other than that, uh, we can have uh, self-intersect detected. So that means if there are any uh, elements within that architectural model that self-intersect, um, then I will get a clash for that in the resolve later. Um, yeah, but that would mean, so we have to be a bit careful with that one. It seems like a good idea, but um, all the walls that are connected or the ducts that are connected with the duct fitting that would all result in a clash because it is all self intersecting, maybe just one millimeter or something, but um, yeah, it is uh, self intersecting. So uh, I leave that turned off. I uh, don't make use of that. That is important to know. Um, and uh, yeah, next thing is that we select the type of uh, clash detection that we want to perform on the type of clash test. So at the moment we have hard, that means that 3D geometry intersect, interferes with other 3D geometry. Uh, other options we have here is hard conservative. That's a bit difficult to describe, but hard conservative uh, means that when you have a look, for example, at that elbow, so um, you maybe know that um, 3D objects in Revit or in AutoCAD are not 100% um, uh, arcs. It's more like um, a collection of many, many uh, triangles. Um, so it can happen that the 3D model is maybe one or two millimeters uh, smaller or wider than the actual real model. So hard conservative puts that into the calculation and uh, maybe gives you a clash um, for objects that are within that one or two millimeters um, uh, of that of that elbow of that arc, um, but you maybe don't actually have a three D uh, have a have a have, have a clash in your in your three D model. Yeah, but it is just a bit of conserv more conservative calculation in the background. Um, other than that, you can check for clearances. That is uh, something we do uh, later as well, and you can check for duplicate. So uh, you want to see everything that is duplicated. Um, so what we do, we go and uh, search for hard clashes. And what I do now here, so in the results tab, you see there's nothing in there at the moment. So I go select and run the test. And here in the clash detective, I now see the results tab automatically. And uh, yeah, now we have eight clashes happening in our model. Um, here on the left, you can uh, control if they get highlighted with a special color, uh, if you uh, uh, focus on the clash or not, uh, if other objects get dimmed or hidden or, uh, or none of these, yes, yeah, so I would suggest to dim or hide the other stuff. And then we can see that, uh, for example, here we have uh, the room geometry that intersects with the duct. That is what I told you before. Uh, while we export it from Revit. So rooms is something that, especially when you check like, against a duct or pipes in a room, that uh, often uh, gives you a clash, but actually it's not really a problem in the real world. Um, let's go maybe to the clash number two. That's more and more an interesting one. Uh, here you see we have really a, a clash between a wall and a duct. And this is something where we have uh, to look after. Uh, yeah, so you go through the clashes you find, and you see there are a couple more of clashes that uh, are uh, interfering with the room geometry. And um, yeah, when you went through these uh, clashes, you can start categorize or give a status to this clash. So that one here, that is not a problem in the real world. So um, I changed the status to approved. Approved means I have reviewed it and it is okay. So uh, if I select just reviewed, that means that the clash is some kind of still active. It just means that I have seen it or recognized it. But uh, if I say, okay, um, everything's fine with that, I go and uh, select approved. Here by, uh, uh, on that column approved by, I see my name now um, uh, that I'm locked in here in Windows. So uh, you can track who approved that clash as well. So that one is uh, a real clash. That one is another one I can approve. 
Um, that one is one that I can approve. And that one here as well. So 50% of our clashes are just the room geometry. Um, so uh, these approved clashes will stay there if you rerun that test later with an updated model. Um, what I would suggest is to set up a clash groups up here. So you can set up uh, a group like uh, approved and you select the green clashes, the approved ones, just drag and drop them into the approved group. So you still have access, you still can see that there was a clash that was uh, approved by somebody, but uh, it really helps you to uh, reduce the number of clashes here in your uh, results tab. All right. Um, <clears throat> So uh, yeah, so you now see that the, the status of the other clash is new because they appeared for the first time in our uh, Nevisworks model. Um, if somebody now sends me another version of that file or of that uh, MEP model or of that architectural model, uh, I can update it here in Nevisworks and I can just click on rerun test and uh, yeah, check if these uh, clashes are still in there. And uh, yeah, you see that, of course, we still have the same class because I didn't update the model. Um, but now the status have changed. And it's not a new clash anymore because we had the same clash in the last version of that file on the last run of the test. But uh, now it is still active, right? It's not resolved, it's not um, assigned to somebody or whatever. Um, yeah, so this is a bit gives me an idea of the of the different statuses you have here in um, the clash detector. Um, let's have a closer look at one of these uh, clashes. So we have um, this clash here, uh, where we have an intersection between the duct and the column. So this is a very small clash is not a really a problem. So uh, your experience tells you that the guys on the construction side, it just moved that uh, duct one or two centimeter to the side and uh, will not be a problem anymore. Um, so what you can do here is go back to the select tab and uh, you maybe recognize that we have a tolerance value in here. And uh, you can decide and say that maybe everything that is within a distance of two centimeter is not really a problem. Um, 0.02. And now I can rerun the test with that new tolerance. And Where is it? Still in there. Uh, sorry. Now we are here. Okay, so it was two millimeters, not two centimeters. Um, yeah, now you see that one clash has disappeared. So I don't have that clash anymore. Um, it is still interfering. So the, the duct is still interfering with the column, but it's not a clash in my list anymore because I have the tolerance set to two centimeters. All right. Um, the next thing I want to show you is that you cannot only uh, check uh, for interferences for uh, for clashes. I uh, already told you that you can also um, check for uh, clearances. And this is something I really like to do and um, it's a really good tool here. So uh, let me just close that uh, Clash Detective for a second. Um, so in that model here, what we can do, for example, uh, just check if I can open all the doors, um, if there is a column or furniture or walls, or whatever, um, somewhere in the model that blocks the door from opening. 
Um, or I can do the same with um, a stair, for example. Do I have um, two meters uh, of space above the stairs, or is there uh, is the cutout in the in the in the slab maybe not big enough? And um, uh, yeah, this is something I can I can check for as well. Um, so what I want to do now in the next step is to uh, set up a clash detection, a test, a clash test for um, to check if the door has uh, a clearance of 1.5 meters in each direction. Um, so I just go to the Clash TI Detective again. Um, so I can, uh, of course, set up a new test if I like to, and just call that one clearance. Uh, and now I go a bit deeper into my file structure. And I don't want to check just all the architectural stuff against the mechanical stuff or whatever. Um, now I want to know if the doors um, have to clash with um, maybe select uh, columns and furniture. Yeah, if you um, press the control key during the selection, yeah, you can select multiple categories. Um, so I changed the setting now to uh, clearance and the tolerance is you know, not like a tolerance anymore. This is now the clearance that you wanna check for. So everything that is within 1.5 meters of that value, so uh, 1.5 meters of my door will get, um, uh, will be a clash in the, in the results tab. Well, let's do that, run that test, see what happened. And you see that we have a clash here between, or not really a clash, but we have a clearance problem uh, between the door and that furniture part, that desk. So that desk is closer than 1.5 meters to the door. So uh, it is maybe difficult to open the door um, and um, maybe stand behind the door or uh, open and close the door um, with the desk in that position, so maybe there's should have a look at that one again and find a better solution. Um, so uh, another option that we have in here that maybe uh, is good to know is that uh, I checked here uh, composite object clashing. Um, so if I uncheck that one and uh, run the test again, you see that I have much more clashes now. Um, now I have clashes for all the sub elements of that desk Revit family. Yeah, so that is maybe a family that was, uh, it has some nested families in there. And now uh, Navisworks mm -hmm. checks every sub category, sub element against my door. Uh, so I can avoid a lot of clashes by just clicking that little button down here. Um, rerun test, so I don't even need to rerun the test that was already cleaned up. And I just have um, that clash against that desk. Um, all right, so I think that is the, the basic settings that um, we need here in the clash detective. Um, now I wanna make use of my selection set that I already set up. Um, Maybe we add a completely new test here that I call walls versus Mac. Um, so now I'm only interested in see what happens to the walls or maybe what happens to the brick walls. Um, and now I can go and change the uh, selection tree here to sets. I'll maybe just select the brick walls and I wanna check the brick walls against everything in the mechanical uh, model. I have to change back the uh, appearance type to uh, hard and the tolerance, you know, if you like to, you can reuse uh, the two centimeters here and go and run the test. Here you see we have one clash now with the brick wall and I add another test um, 
that one I call stat war stat versus uh, feeding. But that one I want to use to just check the, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I can of course also use the uh, selection set here again. Start wall against maybe just the duct fittings. So now I have two tests. Uh, I run these two tests and see the clashes uh, in here, what's happening. Now I have two different, two different types of clashes. Um, the first one is a clash with the brick wall uh, on the duct. So there's not much options for the mechanical engineer. So the best way to solve that clash would be that the architect uh, or the engineer adds a cutout here in that, in that wall. Um, so what I can do here, I can start assigning a clash to somebody. So <coughs> clash number one here, maybe needs to be assigned to the architect. So when that clash is selected, I can go to the assign uh, button here and assign to architect, or of course I can also use the name and um, can also add notes like add cutout and press OK. So you see in your list that you have added a comment to that clash and that you assigned it to the architect. Let me go to the start versus fitting clash. So here you see that uh, that is the fitting that sits inside the, the start wall. So um, for the guys on the construction side, it's maybe not a big deal. They just cut it out with uh, the cutter knife, but um, yeah, it's not really nice that you have the fitting sitting inside the wall or uh, that you have the flange inside a wall. So that is something that the mechanical engineer needs to work on now. And uh, of course, you can also go and select that clash and assign that one maybe to Mac uh, engineer. Comment move fitting. And okay. And now I see here that it is assigned to the Mac engineer. So that gives you the, the option to, to, to track your clashes. Now, if you get a new version of the file, you can just go into that clash detective. Uh, you still have the same test settings in here. You just rerun the test and you check if the Mac engineer or the architect did the work uh, and resolve that uh, problem. If they do, uh, you should not have the clash here anymore, but, or the clash should be um, resolved. All right. Um, so, what's the best way to to tell the MEP engineer or the architect that they need to uh, work on their model? So, uh, for example, let's go to the uh, Walls versus Mac clash test. Uh, the next tab that we see after the results tab is the report tab. And first option you have is that you um, create a report in format uh, of viewport. So you just, you don't, you don't export a PDF file or an uh, XML, HTML file. You just create a few ports here on the side uh, inside your uh, Nevisworks model. So um, I just want to do that for the current test, so for walls versus Mac, because I just want to forward these, that model to the architect and um, the architect don't need to see the clashes uh, that the MEP engineer needs to have a look at. Uh, so I just export the current test as few ports and I go write reports. And now you see that here on the side, on the right you have a new crew walls versus Mac and uh, here we have now one viewport. When I select that viewport, I mean, if you're somewhere else in your uh, road site and you select uh, that clash number one, uh, you have a viewport um, with uh, that clash in there. 
Um, so that is one that is one option that you that you have. Uh, once you have created these uh, clashes, or uh, sorry, once you have created these viewports, um, you can go to uh, the review tab and open the few comments. And uh, you see that here when you select that clash one now, that you see that it was assigned to the architect by me. Uh, what is that the first step is that it, that clash was found by me. Uh, you have uh, the values of the clash where the uh, clash uh, happened, the distance, the type of clash, a bit of the settings what I did or uh, that I used. And you see that I assigned it to the architect with that, with that comment in here. Um, so you can now just save that entire file, save as, go and uh, save it as an NWD file, and just send that NWD file to the architect and tell him, okay, have a look at uh, the few ports, crew, balls versus Mac, clash number one, that is the one that you have um, to look after. Um, that is one way what you can do. Um, other thing, when you are in the Clash Detective, and let's maybe go to the Stud versus Fittings uh, test, uh, go to the Report tab. Um, another option would be we export the current test into uh, an HTML uh, report format. Um, hey, by the way, you can also uh, uh, check or uncheck uh, different statuses of tests so that you don't need to export everything that is already approved. Um, so we can maybe uncheck these ones. Um, yeah, and go and write a report. Uh, make sure that here uh, is all the information, all the content you want to have in that HTML file is checked. So for example, an image is always a good idea to have that in there. And now go and write the report. This is just an uh, HTML file. Uh, save that to my desktop. And uh, let's have a look at that, how it looks. i just go to my desktop and I should have uh, the uh, stud versus fitting HTML, that's that one here. And I have a folder stud versus fitting files. Here we have uh, the different image files that you need for that HTML file. Uh, so that's just another thing what you can just forward uh, that HTML file with that image folder. And uh, if you open up uh, the splash report, uh, that's how it looks like. You, know, you see again the uh, description of the, uh, of the, of the clash, um, what element, the element ID, what clash, and uh, yeah, my comment. Uh, that I have assigned it to the mechanical engineer and that he needs to move the fitting. Yeah, so that's um, how you can uh, let people know uh, what they have to do or where the problems are. Um, so the final thing I want to show you now is um, a quick uh, workflow. Um, if you have to work on the clashes uh, by yourself, uh, if you don't just assign it to somebody, if you have to uh, rectify uh, a clash or two. Um, what you can do here is uh, maybe um, you are the uh, mechanical engineer and uh, you have a look at that clash here. Um, so you, need, you know you need to move that uh, fitting. And um, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty easy, uh, pretty um, small model here. But uh, if you have a multi-story building, it maybe is very difficult to find exactly that fitting um, in, um, in your model again, in your building. So um, uh, what you need to do or what you can do is to go and open your uh, Revit model of that MEP file. So I also have that opened here. So this is just the MEP, uh, the duct uh, stuff in there. And in the add-ins tab, we also have the option to activate the Neversworks switchback 2020. So we just need to make sure that we click on that tool, on that command, before we do the next steps. So I activated that switchback tool. 
And now I can go here in Nevisworks, have a look at that uh, fitting. And uh, yeah, select it, because I know that there is a problem with that one. And here in the item tools up here, I can now select switch back. And you see that here on the bottom, uh, the Revit icon is flashing. When I now go into Revit, I'm exactly in the same position and the same view um, uh, that I had in, in Nevisburgs. And uh, yeah, it's very easy for me <coughs> to find um, now the right fitting, that elbow, and I can just use maybe the, the arrow keys to uh, move that a bit. Down here. Solve the problem. Takes a bit longer than usual here. Now I moved out the fitting out of the wall. Uh, yeah, and so um, you can just go and um, save that file, override the existing one, go back to Navisworks and refresh. I see that there are two questions in the Q&A section. I'll have a look at these uh, in a moment. Uh, so uh, yeah, so what I wanted to show you here is, uh, yes, you know, you see that uh, I easily updated that model. Yeah, so the fitting or the, the flange is now outside the wall. It's not not longer inside the wall. And um, yeah, I resolved that problem by using that switchback tool. Um, yeah, okay. So um, I think that's uh, everything I wanted to show you um, today in that uh, webinar. Um, maybe one more thing. Um, if you have uh, set up some some tests and uh, you want to reuse these tests um, in another project uh, what you can do is also you can import or export clash tests so you can export the clash test settings uh, into an xml file and uh, if you have another project with you yeah, have pretty much the same structure or um, same uh, kind of object in there uh, you can just go and import that XML file again. Um, all right, so let's have a look at the Q&A panel. Um, so the, the first question we have, um, we have t we've had issues with coordinate systems when importing different files, DWG versus Revit, for example. Um, so yeah, that can happen, of course, yeah. So um, the first thing that you need to make sure is that you work on the same uh, coordinate system or when you export from uh, that Revit model um, that you have a look at the settings in here. Um, just go back into that. Mm responding um yeah we had we had that that selection uh, option for um for the different uh coordinate systems in your model so make sure that you pick the right one there um there we are there we are here we are um coordinates yeah so that one here so maybe you just need to change um the the, the coordinate system in here um other than that, um, be crazy. Other than that, what you have um, when you right click on, or you, I mean, you you have imported that uh, mechanical file in here, you recognize that it's on the wrong location and it's not in the right position. Um, you can uh, right click here and here in units and transform. Um, where is that window now? Working with two monitors is sometimes a bit difficult. Where is it? 
it opens somewhere. Ah, here we are. Um, so you see that there are some model units that maybe can be different. You can change that here. Um, and you have the origin point. So if you know the offset between the two models, so you can go and change the origin point here uh, and move that model um, one meter to the side, for example. Um, the worst case, I think, if you don't have any information about the location or the reaching point of that model, I go back to, to zero, um, would be to um, select this model and go to the item tools and move it um, by, by um, snapping to one point that you maybe know the location in the other model. Uh, and move it manually. But these are the options that you have, I think, in, in Nevisworks. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, maybe try to find out the offset um, between the two models and uh, go and to the units and transform panel and um, change your region here um, to the right one. Or the best option, of course, uh, make sure that both models are using the same or which point the same coordinate system. Okay, um, next question. Um, uh, is there a way to filter the clashes with a tolerance so it won't result in a clash if it's not overlapping by a certain tolerance value? Uh, so if I, if I use a tolerance, everything that is within that value um, will not be shown as a clash. Uh, it, it, it goes on here, say you have one file and then an amended one is sent back. If they have deleted the element there was originally an issue uh, with and replaced it with a new one. Uh, how do we find out if they have been corrected? Uh, Okay, if they if they use a new a new object, so it is a new clash. So this the new clash will also be shown. Uh, it is not that the old one is resolved. Um, so the old one will will disappear in your uh, clash detection, and you will have a completely new one. And um, uh, so so that's one thing that happens. Yeah, and, and with the tolerance, everything that when you set up the tolerance here to uh, two centimeters, everything will be filled out. So that is the kind of filter. Everything that is within that tolerance of two centimeter will not be shown here in, uh, in the clash results. Um, if project CDE is on Bentley project wise, confederated Nevis model detect updated NWC export saved on PW. Um, uh, to be honest, I never tried that, but uh, I don't think so, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you cannot automatically detect that there is a new NWC file on project-wise. So I know or there is a version of Nevis Works uh, that works pretty good with BIM 360, um, but um, I'm pretty sure that will not be the same in, on project wise. Uh, is there a way to view all clashes at once or highlight all the objects that are clashing in the same uh, in the same uh, viewport? Um, so yeah, yeah. So um, hmm, uh, this is a bit, uh, let me see, it's something where we have more than one clash. Um, good question. Um, yeah, highlight all clash. That should help. Uh, I mean, we still have that rooms in there, but it's not good. So maybe you can just filter out the, the, everything but the rooms to give you an idea how it should look. Um, and go and run the test again. Oh, there's still the, still the room in there. 
Have a look why the wind is coming up here. Yeah, so that's the way it should look like. Yeah. So if you check here, highlight all clashes, should give you all all clashes in in one viewport. Um, yeah, but to be honest, I mean we have four clashes here now, but in a real project, there will be maybe hundred, maybe more. <laughs> um, yeah, can can be difficult. Yeah, but there is an option yeah, to do that. Uh, would you use the clash detective and the compare functions uh, simultaneously in regards to review and QA the amended models that you get back after sending off the clashing to get fixed? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I could just use that, or I can I can save that settings so that so that model as an NWD file. And uh, of, of course, I would use the same NWD file again if somebody um, sent back uh, amended models to me, um, like I did with the with the switchback. Um, just uh, replace these uh, the, the files, the original files. Go refresh, and check what happens to your clash detect uh, to your to your to your clash results. Are there more? Um, are there some uh, ref uh, so are, are, are there some new ones? Are there some resolved? Um, um, have some disappeared? Um, yeah, I would absolutely use the same model again and again, um, and uh, try to keep a bit of track of what happened in the model. Yeah. Okay, so uh, these are the questions that we had here in the chat. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean, the questions was uh, the reaching points, um, uh, how to fix that. Uh, it's a bit, of course, something project specific. So I'm very happy um, if you just contact me and uh, I have a closer look at the specific project files, how we can how we can resolve that. Um, or if you start working with the Clash Detective, uh, yeah, just, just give us a call. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we we have a look at that. Not a problem. All right. Um, if there are no more questions, um, oh, I see in the in the chat. Uh, yeah. So then there are two more questions in the chat. Do the viewport views report work in uh, Freedom? No, you have no uh, Clash Detective in in Freedom. So um, if somebody, uh, if you if you save the NWD file with the few ports in it, somebody with freedom can review the existing few ports, but you cannot create few port. Um, uh, um, but yeah, but that is uh, um, one uh, workflow um, that a lot of people use um, that they um, just hand over somebody an NWD file. Um, that other person has just freedom, Nevis works freedom, and just uses it to uh, review the clashes that are in there where they have to work on. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, let me know. Contact us, uh, give us a call, and uh, we, um, we, we uh, try to resolve uh, that issue. Um, yeah, have a, have a nice day. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, give it a go. Um, very easy to follow, informative presentation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you as well for attending. Um, and uh, yeah, have a look at Navisworks Manage. Give it a go. And uh, I think it's a pretty good tool. I really love working with it. Um, I hope you will as well. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you. Bye bye.